Which was the hardest question? Which was the hardest Argo question that you got today? Um, one interesting one was about a user trying to get the diff of their um, application outputs, the rendered outputs, um, as part of a pull request. Um, oh, okay. And the challenge that we have is that because people use things like Customize and Helm, um, that full, fully rendered output is obfuscated by the templating tool. And so uh, the desire is like how, if someone is sending a pull request to change this values parameter, um, how might they see the final output and how this might affect uh, right. things. So it's, um, it's a common, actually, they're not the first people to uh, face this challenge. Um, we, we are in favor of a pattern that helps this solution, but it's, uh, since this is specifically asking about that in the pull request, it's, it's slightly different than um, how I might address it in uh, another way. How would you address it? I'm yeah. thinking that, others are thinking that. So, How, What is your approach? What is your preferred approach? Yeah, yeah. Um, we're big proponents of a pattern we call rendered YAML mani uh, branches. So it's slightly the same problem, except that in instead, of, um, instead of Argo CD doing templating uh, as part of its repo server, um, you actually let Argo CD deploy raw YAML, yeah. raw uh, Kubernetes manifest. Um, so something is still responsible for actually templating that out into the Git repo. Um, and so you could automate that with something like a, a GitHub action, which we um, we have a, a, a small tool called Car Cargo Render to help with this pattern. And so you use branches uh, off of each of your environments, such as production, staging, uh, test, um, to represent your different environments. Um, but those branches are nothing but a uh, direct reflection of the tip of, of main, of your main branch. But you have automation tooling like Cargo Render to basically automate the create, uh, rendering into those branches with every commit to main. Um, so that, that brings a, a lot of benefits. Um, one is the visibility of what is that final output of the fully templated YAML. Um, you actually get to see the final result, whether that's customized Helm or whatever uh, config management tool that is obfuscating the, the final output. So that's one of the big benefits is that the final output and the diffing. Um, two, you can take advantage of, of Git provider features like protected branches. So um, this is something we already practice, which is um, any any changes production um, requires a pull request to that prod branch. Uh, meanwhile, we, we let our main branch be uh, a bit more free to, to modify, but prod is always protected using GitHub uh, protected branches features. Interesting. Um, so main isn't prod for you? Main is not prod for us. Is it we, dev? Is main dev? De you can say that, yes. Um, Interesting. And, and we, we do to add protections on on main as well, but uh, we, we, for example, we allow a bot to, uh, a special bot to write directly to main, but um, no one can write directly to bot. That has, that has to go through a pull request. Got it. So that, that's uh, a, a practice that we encourage and something that's enabled by this pattern. Okay, you know. okay. So when you're not helping users yep. with their requests, what is top of your mind? I'm thinking about the problems people have after Argo CD. So um, your top of my, your top of the mind, it's still other people's problems. Yeah, no, I, I think it, I think they're intertwined because uh, I'm thinking about the, the company uh, problems and like how we need to address the future problems that our users have. So even if our users aren't, um, I mean, maybe they're encountering these problems already. Um, but uh, we know that a lot of people are still yet to, to hit these type of problems. And um, so we're thinking about how to solve the problems of tomorrow uh, for our future users. Got so, it. But these are, yeah, these are... Uh, top problem or top two problems? Um, top the future problems. Top future users. problems is what we're trying to address with Cargo. Um, 
we know that Argo CD is limited in in how it doesn't provide a, a orchestration pipeline. Um, it's something that people lost, I would say, when they actually moved to GitOps and, and Kubernetes, and uh, because prior to Argo CD, uh, you had tools like Spinnaker, which did include uh, a pipelining um, component of their deployment solution, but. Uh, whenever, once everyone moved to Kubernetes and Argo CD and GitOps, uh, that that went away. So I, they, they aren't like technically tomorrow problems. People are facing these problems today. Uh, it just hasn't yet been addressed yet. And um, I'm constantly thinking of like how to exp how Cargo can help the, those problems, but also how we might move past Kubernetes because I think we are in a bit of a uh, a bubble, so to speak, right? In the Kubernetes world, like we, we're so hyper focused on, on Kubernetes, but there's other problems like Terraform promotion, right? I think um, the same problems you have with promotion across your uh, Kubernetes namespaces, that's also a problem for your in your infrastructure and your environments. You want to go to dev before staging, before prod. Um, what tool can you use to help you with that, right? Okay, okay, okay. So what would it look like to use Cargo with Terraform or something which is not Kubernetes? That where would you even start? Yeah, no, it's something, that's the type of thing we're actively thinking about. At the end of the day, there's not too much difference between configuration promotion of Kubernetes as there is with configuration promotion of Terraform. Um, you're still just moving files around in a Git repository maybe patching it a certain way. Um, uh, yeah, so I think I, I've, configuration management is actually uh, a quite one of the harder problems that uh, an engineer has to solve uh, like on their day-to-day -day basis. Okay. Um, so what, how we see Cargo addressing this is, is helping you codify and formalize the moving of these bits of these files and patching um, in a in a standard and formalized way, so that people don't have to keep reinventing the, these bespoke scripts and uh, you know directory manipulations over and over again, which we've we've seen people do. And, and you you ask like people, how, how are you promoting between all your stages? And everyone has is embarrassed about their answer and they're, they're like, yeah, we, we have this Jenkins file, we have this GitHub action, we have this script. Um, so that, that's that's the problem we're trying to solve Got with it. Cargo and we're trying to generalize it to um, all types of configuration management infrastructure as code, uh, Git-based uh, declarative uh, deployment tools, include not just Kubernetes, but Terraform and, and others. Yeah. So I know that today Cargo depends on Argo and Argo rollouts. Actually, uh, you don't have to. So we intentionally, it, it integrates very well with Argo CD. Uh, don't get me wrong. Um, we have a special um, part portion of the spec that references Argo CD. But um, the intent from the from day one was for it to be compatible with any GitOps tool, um, and so. Uh, our first example that we I, I like to give people is the, the Cargo Simple example, which doesn't even use Argo CD in the back end. It's all it's doing is running um, a customized build uh, from directory to directory to directory, um, which Fox users would benefit equally well uh, with then Argo CD. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. Okay. Right now we're zero point three. We are, are. How close are we to one point oh? Weeks, months, years. Just like a scale. Yeah, I, you know, to be honest, I w I've never been into marketing numbers. Okay. <laughs> I, I consider the one zero marketing number. Like, so okay, we see. personally use trust and use cargo today in production. So I would say there's different levels to this. Okay. Um, if you're just looking to promote, um, you know, uh, customize commands or Helm values changes from different directories, like you can trust cargo today with prod. Uh, but, I mean, we might change the spec underneath you and you might have to uh, change it, but it's it's stable in that regard, meaning it's not going to 
bring down your infrastructure with a with a bug in cargo. So we trust it doing the right thing um, with respect to the changes it needs to make in, in Git. Um, now we have this whole vision about cargo extending beyond Kubernetes and and handling Terraform or, or AWS Lambdas or uploading assets to a CDN. Um, that's going to take time, and that I think that will uh, take a better part of a year uh, to come up with one, the, the, the plug-in system that we need to have in place to make this uh, uh, extensible and, and actually create a, a proper ecosystem around the tool. Yeah. Um, so that that admittedly will, will take you know, a better part of a year to get right. Got it. Uh, and we're going to iterate on that part. Okay. But in terms of the Kubernetes, the Argo CD stuff, um, uh, I would trust that. I mean, I trust we trust it today with uh, handling our production, and I wouldn't say it's one not zero, but I would say it's uh, close to that. I get it. Okay, okay. So one thing that I think everybody agrees on that having UIs is important. Yes. Because it helps you understand what is happening underneath. Yeah. And I think that's I know what many people love about Argo CD, and one thing which I appreciate about Cargo is that you start with the UI. It looks good, the colors are nice, and it's fairly simple. So it's easy to understand the stages, the promotions, what version runs where. Yeah. So, you know, big thumbs up from me. Thank you. For, you know, starting the UI and putting emphasis on that and not leaving it as a second thought. Yeah. As Cargo evolves, how do you see the UI changing? Do you have some plans for the UI? Something that you feel it's missing? Something that's coming? Where is that going? Yes, um, so thank you for recognizing that, but the the intent from day one has been to design the interface for the application developer, not the platform engineers. Um, so an application developer actually could, they could care less about GitOps. GitOps is for kind of uh, the leadership who wants to make sure things are auditable with proper change control. Um, but if you talk to an app developer, a service owner, um, they just need a, a, a interface for which they can take their stuff to production. Um, and so they, they're more interested in, in a click ops because no one, no one goes fully I autonomous. Term. I love that term. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. They, they, no, no one does fully autonomous promotions to production. Like, uh, I, I've been around long enough that that's kind of like, it's very, this is, this is like a pipe dream. Because you, you still make human decisions to take things to production. Not every commit that you make to your co source code repo is in this uh, uh, goes to production uh, right away. So with that realization, you you need a, a start page, a home page where app developers are going to visit two, three, four times a week. To, to take something to production. Um, this page is also where they should visit to also make sure when they take something to production, um, everything is going smoothly. So um, we recently added to Cargo the ability to perform analysis after a promotion. Um, and what needs to happen next in the Cargo interface is the visualization of, of that analysis that happens afterwards. Um, so understanding, OK, I just promoted to prod. I am now in the mode of verification. Uh, verification might be 20 minutes, it might be a full day or longer. So it depends on what you chose to, to, to be in verification. Uh, but the visualization we need is surfacing what's happening with that analysis, the metrics, if it's, doing, if it's querying Prometheus or a metric provider, um, show that information. Hey, your error rate is still 90. 99, 100%, you're good to go. If, if it's not, it sh you should see something dipping down. So as we think about KubeCon, as we think about this conference, what is different about this one from all the others that you've been to? How is this KubeCon different? I, I, I would say every year the questions get harder. Interesting. <laughs> yes, because um, the Argo project has been long enough, uh, around long enough that you're past the basics, right? So the conversations that you have aren't more about like what is Argo CD and how will it help me? Um, it's about, hey, 
we have this really interesting corner case use case bug. Um, how can I? How can Argo CD address that or get this fixed? And so the conversations are much more intricate and deeper. Um, and I mean, they have been before, but I, I, I feel like it gets harder every year. I see. Okay. Okay. Anything that you're going to do different after this KubeCon? Anything that you've taken away for yourself? Anything you've observed? which will prompt a change in maybe how you approach things or how you do things? Yeah, um, so, so when answering some, a lot of these people's questions, like I realize uh, there's a lot of information and, and uh, documentation and, and blog posts that people um, that have been solved their use case, um, they just don't know about it yet. So it's always gratifying to, to listen to a use case or a problem and say, yeah, this is already uh, solved by this feature and customized or, or something where, um, and, and, and I, I feel like what needs to happen is more education around things. I don't, I mean, blog posts is one thing where we can improve and, and start uh, blogging about uh, some of the common patterns or problems that people face and our opinions on how to address them. Yeah, I, I think developer advocacy is always a good thing, and, and I think we could do more on that front. Okay. Anything you're going to be doing differently about DevRel? Anything that's like documentation or any change in how you approach it? Because as you mentioned, it's already out there. You've been doing certain things, but people, are, I mean, that information isn't somehow getting to the users. Yeah. So is there like a change in approach that may benefit them? Um, I think we could do, on our side, we could probably blog more and uh, document more. I think, I do feel, for example, in, in Cargo, we, we're, uh, it's, again, it's, it's still early, but there's a lot that we need to give more examples about. Because I, I, feel, I do feel a lot of people's use cases can be addressed in, in, in many different ways. It's just that we haven't published about the, the examples and stuff to how to to address them. So I don't have a good answer other than to write more. <laughs> I see. OK. Yeah. Jesse, it's been a, uh, my pleasure to meet you for the first time in person. Yes, likewise. Thank you very much for uh, talking to me today. And I'm very curious what to do next with Cargo. Yeah. It's on my short list of things to use more. And I'm just dipping my toes in it, but I like what I see. Good. And it starts with the UI. So thank you very much. Thank you. See you next time. See you.